Hello everyone, Rob here. Today we're going to have a look at the 4NEC antenna simulation software editors. This is the way you enter in your creations into the antenna simulator, so it's very important. There are a number of editors available, but before we have a look at that, let's just get a little bit of basic theory out of the road. Um, the way that you actually enter information in it, into the editors is in three dimensions. You have to define an antenna as a point in three-dimensional space. Now you, we use the three-dimensional coordinate system X in one direction, Y in the other, and Z as the height. So that's all, that's all there really is to it. Now each wire is defined as a beginning and an end. So each end of the wire will have an X, Y and Z coordinate and the other end another X, Y and Z coordinate. And that's really all there is to it. Now segments. As I mentioned in the first tutorial, NEC works by chopping up a wire or radiating element into a number of little chunks. Each chunk is called a segment. Now the number of segments is defined by yourself. You, know, you could use one or ten or a hundred. It all depends on you know, how you wish it to be, how accurate you want it to be and so forth. You don't really need a lot of segments for the sort of work that we do. You know, ten segments is more than enough for most of the things that we wish to do. Um, I tend to use odd numbers of segments because that way, for example, if I want to feed it at a particular point, um, so let's say I want to put a transmitter fi uh, transmission feed line right in the middle of this wire here, that way I know if I if I put that at segment five that there will be an equal number of segments. That's four either side. That's that's the reason, but it's really up to you. Okay, so that's segments. Um, also, each wire will have a tag. Notice here it has a tag. That's just simply a number. It's a way of identifying it. It's like if you're on a train station, you know, platform one, two, three, etc. It's the same thing. Nothing, nothing more complicated. Now you notice this has got 15 segments. Sorry, this is segment 15. So obviously this has got more than nine segments. <laughs> uh, if we have a look at this wire here, it's on segment seven, and by clicking you can have a look at which segment you're on. That's segment nine. It doesn't really matter. I just thought I'd point it out. Um, also, there's this little round thing here. That is actually the voltage source. That, that's the feed point. It's denoted by this little circle here. If you click on it, it'll give you a little information box and it says this particular one is at wire one, tag one, segment five. Now this wire has got nine segments, therefore it's right in the center, segment five. It also gives you the, the values, the voltage, the power assumed, the SWR. And you notice the voltage is 688 plus J0, which basically means it's in phase. The current and voltage is in phase. If this J was some, if it was something else apart from zero, then the voltage would be either leading or lagging the current. It doesn't really matter for our purposes. Let NEC do the work. Okay, so now let's, let's have a look at the editors. First of all, we select the notepad editor and we click on it and here we have, it's just a notepad, a standard sort of Windows notepad, nothing special um, except for the data included. Now, if you have a look, um, the first one is we have a column, a group of values here. These are basically identifiers. They describe the type of information which follows. CM means a comment. Uh, SY means a symbol, uh, GW means a, a wire geometry or geometry wire, uh, FR is frequency, uh, 300 megahertz in this case, uh, and so forth. So you get the idea. Um, we can simply um, use this like any, or any other notepad type of editor. Uh, you just have to make sure the fields are valid. Um, it uses um, tabs to delimit the fields here so just thought I'd point that out and there you go we'll have a look at the information included in here a little bit later but uh, we need to get through the editors 
OK, the next editor is the NEC editor. Again, we just click, we select it here in the settings, and then after we've selected it, we just click the editor button. Now, this is very similar to the notepad editor, except that this one has got some intelligence in it. So let's say, for example, that we want to add a comment here. Now, well, so we'll click on this particular one, and notice it gives us the line, and it shows us what those values are. So let's just go through it. It says GW, which is basically saying it's a wire. Uh, it has a tag of two, which is the identifier, and it's this particular line here. Uh, wire there, this one here, it's highlighted. It has nine segments in it. It has an X, Y, and Z of one. So one point is X, Y, and Z of one. And the other point is minus one, one, and one. So it's just basically identifying the beginning and end in three-dimensional space. Now this wire rad is the dimensions of the wire. It's radius, how thick it is. Now if we wanted to add some more, we can just click on the line we want and we press insert and that will put another line after it. Now let's say we just wish to put a comment on so let's have a look and there is CM so comment line just click underneath here and it will whoops and we can just put in whatever we wish to say say and press save and there we go. Now if we wish to um, see what the effects of our changes are we just press this calculator button here. Oh, it says we have some errors we won't worry about that at the moment because um, this is just a demonstration file. I know it has some errors in it. Okay, so we can delete that as well. Press save and away we go. Now let's say we want to remove a wire. Uh, we can simply go there and remove it. Okay, um, if we wish to, oh, just one thing I will I will add, let's say we wish to put in another wire um, and we select this, if you just click under here it will actually give you all the all the information already there. Now it's the same as the original one so remember you need to change it to another tag. So in the, we've already got two and one and two so we need three and so forth so then you can change the number of segments, the beginning X, Y and Z the ending X, Y, and Z, and the radius. But uh, we'll just forget about that one. So we'll delete it. Oops. And we'll, oh, we'll save that first. And then we'll delete it. Also, we'll delete this second line here, this particular one. And we'll save it and recalculate and it says wires 1, tag 1 and tag 2 and are overlaid. Okay, and there we go. So we only have one now. So you can see you can change things in this editor. It's not too bad. Um, pretty, pretty straightforward to use. Okay, let's close that editor and go to the geometry editor. Now this particular editor, again, just click on that click on there and away you go. Now I'm going to delete these antennas or these wires so that we can actually generate our own. So you just make sure this is on the select object, press the object you wish to select and press delete. The same here, delete. Now we're left with this which is the voltage source. In other words, it's our feed point. In, it's our driving voltage. So we wish to delete that as well. We've selected it and we delete that as well. So what we're left with now is X, Y and Z coordinates. Now let's generate a new antenna. Well first of all, let's go to the wire. Wire geometry. 
Oh, I'll just tell you what these buttons up here are. The first one is wire. So this is when you want to add wire elements or rod elements, whatever. Um, this is for voltage sources, in other words, your feed point. This is if you want to add uh, traps or coils or capacitors or anything of that nature. This is if you want to add a transmission line. This will show you uh, a bit like the, the notepad editor will show you the result of, of your, your work in the graphical mode, but it will show it to you in a, in a table. Uh, this is the frequency. You can define the frequency there. And this is the type of earth. Now these are the different views. Now you can have a 3D view where you can rotate things around. Uh, you can look at just the X and the Z axes. So you can see you can see the X and the Z. The Y is there but it's pointing straight at you so you can't see it. You can look at Y and Z. So you can see you can see Y and Z. Or you can look at X and Y. You can see you can see X and you can see Y and Z is poking straight at you. So this is almost like you're looking from above. Okay, now when you're actually defining an antenna it's probably best to use these uh, rather than the 3D because trying to work it out in 3D is not so easy. Okay, first thing to do is you can say well what am I going to, what scale am I going to use for my grid? So let's say for example that you wished, oh pardon me, <coughs> let's say you wish to use uh, 0.05 a meter let's say 0.1 of a meter. So each one of these little squares down here, or the five squares, will be 0.1 of a meter. So each one of these will be 0.5. So if you look here, the X and Y, if we put it there, you can see it says 0.5 in the Y here. And if we move it over here, you can see it says 0.5 for X and Y. So you get the idea. The Z, um, because we're not actually uh, seeing the Z at the moment, that's why Z is not shown. So let's, let's define our antenna. Remember we're looking from above and this is Z looking straight down from the top of the antenna. So let's put one wire from here. Oh, sorry. Uh, you need to select on what you want to do and then add. And then we'll put that there and we'll move that to there. So you can see we have a length of three, three meters in the Z direction. Now, this says what would you like the wire radius to be in millimeters we'll just leave it at one millimeter but you could change it to whatever you wish okay well there's our first element now let's say uh, here it shows us what this element is now it has a a tag of one which is its identifier it has one segment now let's make that nine segments we want to give it a little bit of NEC something to work with its radius is one millimeter. You could change it. Look, you've got all these different wire gauges or you can just use the millimeters. Now this is one end, zero, 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 because it's there. And the other end is three, zero, zero, because it's there. So X, Y, and Z. If we have a look at it in 3D mode, we can see, whoops, oh, sorry, added another one. I still had it in add mode. That's the reason why, so I'll delete that. Okay, if we have a look at it now, we can see we have this antenna, but it's rather low. <laughs> In fact, it's laying on the ground because if you notice, this is Z, which is our height. So let's bring it up a little bit. So let's have a look at uh, X and Z. So we can see the X plane and the Z plane, which is the height. And let's bring it up. And so if you have a look at Z, it's now up at four meters high. See here, four meters. Okay, let's look at it in 3D space now. That looks a little bit nicer. Okay, now we need to feed this particular antenna at some point. So let's feed it. Um, for this, we need to put in a source of energy and press add. And we, so there we have it. Now. So that's our feed point there. Now, if we have a look here, it says one plus J zero. In other words, it doesn't really matter what this particular setting here is. Just leave it where it is. The zero means it's in phase. So there is no phase shift between the current and the voltage. Okay, so um, one other important point is where you're going to feed it. Now, you, we could move this along and put it, say there, for example, 
but we don't want to do that. So we could put another feed point rather because we're still in add mode. So if we wanted to, we could move it along there, for example. Now you notice it's at segment six, but that gives us an une unequal feeding. Pretty good if you want an off-center dipole, but we don't want that at the moment. So we're going to put it back at five so it's right in the center. Now you can add these fields manually. You can change this there, click it and put it. So you don't have to move it along. Okay, why don't we have a bit of, oh, we need to define the frequency. So let's have a look here and we'll define the frequency as, I don't know, 50 megahertz. And Fifty megahertz. We're all set there. It's put down. You notice it's put down the wavelength in meters. Okay. Now let's press this and calculate and generate the data. And there we go. So we have our dipole. Here we have the information on it. You notice SWR is 2.3. Wow, that's not bad just for a wild guess, isn't it? Just making up a frequency. Um, okay. Now if we have a look at this pattern diagram here. This is the vertical plane and that's the horizontal plane. Now let's change another thing on this. Let's change the earth. It's in free space so let's make it over a real ground. Uh, average, let's, let's put it where I am, uh, rocky steep hills. Okay now let's recalculate it now with the, the new ground and there we go. We have our sombrero so this is in the vertical plane, so this is looking at it from the side, this is looking at it from above. If we want some more information, press the J and it gives you the point of maximum radiation. And you press I and it gives you some more information, it gives you the bandwidth and um, well, a few other things, uh, dBs. And you can drag this if you wish around and at various angles you can see what the amount, uh, how much radiation there is. Um, if we have a look at horizontally, same thing. And the last thing we can do is we can press the G key which will actually put a little diagram of the antenna. It's there. You can't see it very well but it's there. So if you just remember JIG, J-I-G, that'll help you. Okay. So there we go. Now the last, we'll close that. Uh, I might save that first. Okay. The last one we'll have a look at in our editors is the NEC editor. This is quite a useful one as well. Okay. Now we, um, we have a look here and it has symbols. We're not using any symbols at this moment. Geometry, which is the same thing, the tag, we only have one wire so we're looking at one. We have nine segments, X, Y and Z at one end, X, Y and Z at the other end and the radius of the wire. The scaling is in meters. The source and load, we're using a voltage source. It's on t at wire number one or tag one. It's at segment number five, so right in the center. That's irrelevant. It has a real component, no imaginary component. The magnitude or the value is one, and that's all we really need to know. The frequency is 50 megahertz. Uses the real ground. You can choose all sorts of different types, and again, you've got all sorts of different types of ground. Um, this here, not really much use to you. Comments as again. Now. You can go through here and just add another one. Let's say we, we can put in a helix, an arc, or whatever you'd like, but let's just put a wire in. Again, we have tag two. Let's make it nine segments. Uh, let's make this one, one, and three. And let's make this uh, four, five, five, and five. And here we'll make this 1e minus 3, which is just scientific notation for those people who obviously know it. And if we want, we can press the save button and then we can recalculate and we'll probably get some errors. But we'll say, oh no, lucky. <laughs> okay, so then we can have a look and we've got another wire, but it's just sitting around in space. It's not doing anything, but you get the idea. 
Now let's say for example we wanted to change the height. Now let's say we want or the, the end point. We could make this uh, you know height 1. Now then we go to the symbols and we type in height 1 equals 7 for example. And then we save that and then we recalculate and you notice it's still there, it's fine, there's no problems but now the difference is that we can change this height anytime we want so we can have a look at that and we can change that to you know um, 6 or whatever. Now you might think okay why, well let's say you had a number of different points where you where you wanted heights so you could have this as well could be height 1 and so that would make it a lot easier to change heights because then you just change this one and all the others within here would change. I'll just recalculate that. Might get some errors but won't worry too much about it. Oh no, well there you go. As you can see. Now this will come become much more useful later on in the um, in the tutorial on optimization. So we will need to use symbols for that. Okay, well I think we're probably running a little bit out of time here so I'll leave it there. I hope that's helped you and and uh, we'll be going through a little bit more uh, and using some of the editors and, and getting more in-depth and detailed but for the time being I hope that's helped you to at least get um, a start. Now with the editors if you if you have um, an editor like let's say for example you're using the geometry editor and you've got this antenna in here already and you think how, how am I going to get rid of it? You can if you want just go new and that'll do. Um, then you can just go save as and let's say you want to call it you know first try now you can just you know now you can just do it. Remember to use add oh yes anyway it'll 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 tell you what's going on here it won't be a problem. So um, yeah just enjoy and I'm sure that you'll have a great time with it. Uh, the next uh, tutorial will go more in depth into uh, how to optimize antennas and also um, uh, we'll just go through a few of the the matching, how to, how to do matching and um, so forth using stubs and RLC networks and basically how to, how to uh, design a tuner for your antenna. Uh, 73's